Hello everybody, Chris here. And in this video, I wanted to talk about swapping out different skins for a character inside of Godot for a 2D pixel art game. So what I'm talking about here is that you might have different variations on your character. That could be things like the hairstyle or the skin color, the shirt, that kind of thing. And you want to be able to easily swap it in without having to reassign every animation every time you change out the base texture for each of these sprites. So just to give you an idea of what that can look like, let me go ahead and throw in some different eye colors here. So I'm just gonna change this to green light and all I need to do is to drop this texture under the texture here and then boom, you have green eyes. And you'll notice that it even has the animation for those eyes and that's because the sprite sheets match up with each other. So. As long as you have matching sprite sheets, and I could kind of show you a little bit about what that might look like, then it's very easy to come in here and to swap out the different sprite sheets. So here, let's try a sailor blue light uniform. I'll just drag that onto the texture here, and then boom, you have a different shirt color. And here is a reskinning of the skin tone. So basically what you would have with this setup, this is a pack called Cozy People on itch.io, by the way, if you're interested. You could basically create many different characters which have the same animations uh, because the sprite sheets are properly set up for that. So in order for this to work properly, you need a few things to happen. Uh, first off, when you create your character, it's going to need separate sprites for each of the different components for your character. Because when we change out, let's say the character's body, uh, we're not swapping out the hair and everything else. So those are all broken down into separate components. So you need one sprite for each of these things that's going to be layering on top of your pixel character. So the shoes, in this case, are their own. The shirt can be their own. Each accessory would be their own sprite. And you could basically just set up one for as many as you need, as much as you need to be able to swap them out at will by just dragging a new texture onto the texture spot in the top right. So what you also notice here is that in the animation player, uh, we have a individual frame track for each of the sprite components. So we're animating each of these components at the same time using the same frames, though it doesn't necessarily have to be the same frame. So I did think, okay, you could just put this into code and uh, basically copy the frame from one component to the others. And with for this particular pack, that would work. But if you ever ran into the situation where one of your components, like the shirt, um, all of the sprites for that had a different row and column setup than, let's say, the body, then they would be out of sync, of course, if you're just copy and pasting the frame. So. Um, I think it's better this way. You can also kind of visually see what each component is supposed to look like when it's sitting on top of your character. So just doing it this once for each of those components works well. So you only need to set this up once for each of the components per animation, because as long as each of these sprite sheets that you're gonna swap out uh, basically look the same, have the same rows and columns, just different details like the color of the pixels, then when you swap it out, it's still gonna use the same frame. So on the sprite components, it's using frame zero, frame one, frame two. It doesn't really need to know anything else about it. So when you drag a, another sprite sheet into here, it's still gonna be using those frame numbers. So as long as your frames match up, you'll be good to go and you can just swap them out at will. So we can take a quick look at uh, what those sprite sheets might look like as well. So here we have the image of the sprite sheet for the base character animation. That's the body that sits under the beard, the shirt, the shoes, everything. And uh, you'll notice that it's split into different rows for each animation. So the first row here, and I can just zoom in a little bit so it's more obvious, is a walk down and then we have walk up. So what's important if you're gonna be making your own sprite sheets is that those match up with each other for the component. So if I go over here to the animation two, and let's zoom in again, then you can see first row is walk down, Second row is walk up. Also note they're the same number of frames in the same position of all of those frames, the same uh, pixel size for each frame. So as long as you stick to those constraints and you swap out one of your sprite sheets for another, then the only thing you're gonna notice is the difference in the color. And uh, one thing to point out about like this pack, the hair is also animated here. The beard is also animated here. So when those were being set up, they were set up specifically for these animations. So if you're using a program like Asaprite, you can just break it up into separate layers, export each layer, and then your beard can be animated to fit the walk cycle animation of your character. 
So by having your characters set up in this way, where you have swappable parts, then it becomes very easy to just create another character by going up to scene. And uh, we just take this base character scene, save it as a new character. And uh, maybe I'll just say girl one here. Why not? And then now on this new scene, let's just rename the character there. So it makes a little bit more sense. And we'll just swap things out as we need. So for hair. So for hair, we could go. So for this hair sprite, we can just put in wavy blonde. Okay, maybe we got to get rid of the beard. So let's take that accessory and change that into something else. So here we could just do glasses instead. So maybe blue glasses. Okay. And then we have legs down here. So let's just change that into a, let's say a skirt. So pink skirt, why not? And there you go, pretty much within about 30 seconds after the initial setup, I just swap out a few different sprite sheets and we have a different character that's animated in the same way. So now I could uh, take that character and just pop it into the game world like so. And there you go. So once again, this particular pack I'm using is called Cozy People on itch.io. So that's pretty much in a nutshell how all of this is going to work. Uh, so I do want to point out, looking at uh, this other sprite sheet, that uh, once again, everything is animated with the same rows and columns. Now, it isn't necessarily strictly required that a different component is going to have the same amount of rows or columns, just that you have frames that match up with each of your animations. So it might be easiest to set up a sprite sheet, something like this, where just that there is a sprite matching up every single frame in the base character's animation, and then you just layer on top of that. But as long as you had one frame that matches each of your animations, you could theoretically get away with less. And that is once again, where in the animation player, uh, having them separate here kind of comes into play. So if you needed to reference a frame that wasn't frame zero here, you could just put in frame 14. If uh, your hair sprite sheet doesn't match your body sprite sheet, that's okay, as long as you can match up each of the frames with each other so that it has the correct animation and flows smoothly. So uh, that pretty much is everything about how you can set up reskinning for a pixel art character inside of Godot. So I've been Chris, hope this helped you guys out there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my future video content.